Welcome to Hospitality Live with Rupesh. Each week, we feature an industry leader that will share the latest trends and the best strategies to help you grow. Now, welcome your host, Rupesh Patel. Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning to the sh- Welcome to the show. This is episode number... Let me pull this off real quick. All right, this is episode number 77. Guys, today is a special episode. So this entire month, we're talking about revenue, how to boost up your 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 income. But you know what? Yesterday when I heard the news about Arnie Sorensen, I had to change plans. I had to change focus. And this is what we do in hospitality. We're nimble. We're quick. We make changes. And listen, today is a show dedicated to the late, the great hotelier, Arnie Sorensen. And listen, uh, I've been following him for years now, and he's been an inspiration to me. Secretly, he's been my mentor. And guys, comment, let me know where you're watching from, where you're listening from, because we have people that are associated with the Marriott brand from around the world. And I know there's so many people that looked up to Arnie Sorensen and really just had a connection with him, even though they never met him. I never met him, but I just felt like I was his friend and I was connected to him just by his stories, by his articles, by his inspiration. And honestly, he's helped all of us continue growing through this, you know, these challenging times this past year. And I think there's so many people like yourselves that are watching that could be inspired by the stories that we're going to tell today. So this is episode number 77. Guys, welcome to the show. We're live on LinkedIn like we are every week. Uh, YouTube and now Clubhouse. Thank you so much to all the people that are on Clubhouse listening. Um, guys, we're here to share stories of inspiration, get you motivated, and really make a connection between Arnie Sorensen and all of us that we're going through a lot of stuff in our lives. Even right now, even as we're running our properties, if we're open or closed or with limited service or staffing or occupancy, so many different things. Today, we're going to discover his contribution to hospitality. We're gonna find out his achievements, which I'm super proud that he got these different awards and he was just a leader in in the space and and find out his leadership habits and how they're gonna connect to us and how they are connected to us. So thank you so much for joining this this conversation. And there's so many people, all right, so we have people from Canada. Um, All right, so we have Michigan in the house, India's in the house, New York, Albany, yay. Um, Christopher is in the house. Virginia, Maryland. If you're if you have a Marriott, you're working in a Marriott, please comment. Or if you just were inspired by Mr. Sorensen, please comment. Let us know. We have celebration in the house. Uh, so many wonderful people from Dubai. Jennifer from Orlando, Niagara Falls, Daytona Beach. Good morning, Jacksonville. We have some amazing people on it. I know you guys are all um, huge fans, and it was this is a big loss for the industry because you know. Even last year, as the pandemic started, uh, leaders from our space went to D.C. and fought for what we currently have as far as some of the funding, some of the open, as far as some of the safety measures, all these things that we wanted, we're slowly getting them or we've already received them. So thank you so much to Arnie Sorensen for all of these things that ha- that he helped with during you know his time. And and he wanted all us, all of us to grow. So super excited about that, uh, that he helped us. And we're going to more, talk more about that, guys, this show. And I'm not going to make it a, a big sponsorship, but the show is brought to you by Impulsify. Thank you so much to Impulsify. Uh, they help our hotels generate more revenue. And this show is brought to you by them. So thank you so much for the support. Thank you so, mu- so much for supporting the industry as a whole, Impulsify. So if you need some more information, go to impulsifyinc.com. All right, so every week I talk about a mindset. Every week I talk about something that has inspired me. And just yesterday, uh, I posted surround yourself by people that lift you up, right? People that help you grow, people that help you, that motivate you. Do you guys have a group of people that you surround yourself with, that keep you going, that lift you up, that maybe inspire you to keep going? This is what Arnie Sorensen did. And I actually wrote... So his last article here on LinkedIn sharing his health update, at the end of his article, he said he said he ended it off by saying, uh, inspire you. Hold on. He, uh, he said, all right, help you grow, keep you motivated to be your best, inspire you, uh, and just be there. He said, let's stay focused, stay strong, and let's do great work together, right? So are you with a group of people 
that are aligned with your thoughts that keep you going. And I think that's very strong when we're thinking about a mindset, keeping us going. Because there's a lot of times where I'm like, ah, oh, these people around me that are kind of not helping me grow and it's kind of bringing me down. And I think that's a, a great mindset when you're trying to grow yourself. And I think it's powerful when you can keep going with a good group of people that are just going to keep you going. So I love that. That's our mindset this week. All right. So every week we're going to, every week we talk about what's happening in hospitality and we talk about what's happening in travel. And my buddy, Sarah Dandy, she's on. Let me get her intro together and get her on and talk about what's happening real quick on the hospitality front. Hi, I'm Sarah Dandishi from Ask the Concierge. Every week, I'll be sharing the latest hospitality and travel news and updates in a segment we like to call Hospitality Minutes. Hey, Sarah, how are you doing? Doing well. Good morning. Thanks for having me on, as always. (laughs) And the news about Arnie Sorensen, what did you think? Because you're Marriott partner. Yeah, I do. I do work very closely with Marriott and um, I... They have a special place in my heart just because kind of as I was growing in my career as like a little like entrepreneur, entrepreneur, um, they, you know, kind of took me under their wing and they're like, hey, we we see this like potential in you and we want to work with you. So I have a very um, soft spot in my in my heart for certainly the the company as a whole. Um, and I was always so impressed by how he was as a leader. So uh even though it might not be like a surprise because we did certainly know what his health challenges were. It certainly was very, very sad to hear. I I felt, I felt very blue. I have to say like over the past couple or yesterday, certainly it was just, it was just sad. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and it's just, it's heartbreaking to hear that, you know, cause I connected this and I'm going to talk about this. I connected his loss to my dad that passed away the day before my birthday last, last October from COVID they were the same age, right? And uh, and similarly, I understand cancer and what what's going on with that because my mom had breast cancer and she just kind of battled through it in November, right? And so exactly. that really connected to me and it came back to like, we're all going through something and I feel like it's powerful and you can kind of relate and, and I feel like hospitality, we're all, <laughs> we're all going through something. Totally. But, um, I, I think it's powerful that we all stay connected and keep each other going. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, even I think back to, you know, the the video that he put out last year at the start of the pandemic, like the, the middle of March, you know, he obviously was going through treatment and he still made the decision that even though times were as challenging as what they were, you know, he still did uh, the video presentation and you could see that he had been going through cancer treatment and he had no hair, um, but he still was uh, this beacon even in that time. And he just really kind of stressed that whole togetherness. So um, yeah, definitely has had many, many powerful and significant moments. Well, I'm happy that you're partnered up with Marriott and uh, let's talk about what's going on hospitality right now. Let's bring up your presentation. Okay, cool. Perfect. All right. So we'll go ahead and dive into the hospitality minute. Uh, A a lot of interesting trends that are going on. Some maybe not so surprising, but I always love to kind of like back them up with a couple with some numbers. So what we're seeing, first of all, uh, millennials are the generation that are most likely to travel in 2021. Now, that might not be so surprising, but I love to do a deeper dive into this. So this was a new survey by healthcareinsider.com. And they basically focused on Americans' perceptions of the pandemic. Uh, And then millennials, they found, are 50% more likely than Gen Xers and 15% more likely than baby boomers to feel comfortable traveling by at least fall of 2021. Um, They're basically saying that that, um, the millennials group, so about uh, 18 to 34-ish, arguably maybe a little bit older, um, were also the most likely the generation about 19% of the the vote to cite that travel is the activity that they are most eager to resume after the pandemic. So again, uh, may not necessarily be a a surprise, but really good to see the numbers backing that up and to know, you know, as far as moving forward to be very, very mindful um, of that population. So uh, moving on, another new study found that travelers are more environmentally aware due to COVID-19. Uh, and this is also a great thing that we've been hearing murmurs uh, about, but 
again, to kind of back it up. So according to data from um, IHG Hotels and Resorts, they found that 60% of the adults that they surveyed across the United States, United Kingdom, Germany, China, UAE, and Australia said that they want to be more environmentally and socially aware when traveling. That's 60% of adults surveyed. That's great. Uh, they also found uh, that 69% of travelers aged 18 to 24 want to do more local, uh, want to do more for local communities and residents while on the road. Um, to give you an idea, uh, it, it, it's about 48% of people 55 and over said the same thing. So again, I think that's just a, it's a really um, great thing that people are more socially aware my, and conscious about everything. So. Um, yeah, the, it, it's definitely, it's a great trend. And it's also interesting to see that younger generations are, are more supportive of that trend. Uh, and then finally, our last little trend that we are seeing staycations go figure, are on a rise around the world. So uh, research done by Who, which is an online platform, uh, online hotel room um, platform, found that the level of staycations has increased around the world. Again, not too much of a surprise, but they found that it actually increased um, by an average of 18% um, when compared to this time uh, last year. So, and also interesting, so, uh, staycations are on the rise, but also the cost of accommodations were also climbing. So the cost of accommodations, even for those staycations, rose about 16% as well, too. Um, and then currently on average, just as far as like looking as far as um, what people are looking ahead to, international versus domestic holidays booked, uh, an average of 76% of all bookings are for domestic holidays. So again, just food for thought, something to keep in mind um, and all the stats and figures to support those. So that's it for today's Hospitality Minute. Sarah, it's always a pleasure having you on. Um, you. I know we're doing Clubhouse in the background. We're doing we are. things. I'm super excited always to work with you. And I'd love to see what's coming out with you and the Marriott uh, brand here in the next couple of months. Is that a hint? <laughs> uh, that's a hint. That's a hint. You will probably see me doing something in association with them uh, probably in about three weeks. So we'll be excited yeah, to talk about uh, their newest offering, Homes and Villas by Marriott Ooh. International. So stay tuned. Interesting. Interesting. Sarah, where can people find you? You guys could uh, find me, my first one, my, my website, askaconcierge.tv or on all social media platforms as Ask a Concierge. Or, of course, if you're on LinkedIn, hit me up at Sarah Dandishi. Sarah, it's <laughs> always a pleasure having you on. It's always fun to learn what's going on in hospitality and travel. And this week, you're headed to Mexico. I am. So in two days, I'm headed to Mexico. I will be there, kind of Cancun, Riviera Maya area. Uh, we'll be checking out a couple properties. Definitely follow along. I'll be sharing a lot more on Instagram. So uh, we'll see what, what they're doing there. And then I'll, I'll also be covering, as far as the way back, what the whole experience is like to get uh, COVID tests on property to get back into the States. So that'll be interesting. Well, I'm interested in learning. I follow you on Instagram. Guys, follow her at ask a concierge um, anywhere she has she's all over the place so Sarah it's always a pleasure having you on and I'll see you next week yes you will thank you guys thanks Sarah all right guys this, so this is episode number 77 this is a tribute to the late great Arnie Sorensen you know I've written down so many notes I'm so proud of what he's done for the hospitality space and along with me just sharing I would love to bring my good friends on here in this eye and from the No Vacancy podcast show, we, Glenn Hausman's all over the place. Welcome, gentlemen. How are you? So good to see you today, but uh, sad that we had to be brought together under these particular circumstances. Absolutely. And uh, can you guys explain really quickly to the audience that may not know you or knows you just what your background is real quick? Aaron? All right. Uh, hi, uh, Rupesh. Uh, Glenn, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm the president and CEO of 3H Group. Uh, been in the hospitality industry since 1993, and uh, since it's a tribute to Arnie, you know, got to uh, got into the Marriott family in 2000, and uh, probably got to know Arnie a little bit, uh, uh, probably 20, from since 2015 uh, uh, to his uh, unfortunate passing. Got to know him a little bit better. 
Yeah, and I am uh, Glenn Hausman. I host um, No Vacancy Live every day at noon here on wherever you're uh, watching this right now, as well as other great content. I try very, very hard to be very in the mix in hospitality to empower, educate, and entertain everybody that's out there. So that's me. And well, I'm also not in front of Marriott's headquarters. <laughs> well, their, their headquarters are in Bethesda, Maryland. And, you know, I've been following Arnie Sorensen for so long. Like every time he has an article out, I'm reading it. Every time he has something in the news, I'm reading it. He's all over the place. He's been on so many different news channels as far as talking about his brand. He's grown the brand to what it is right now with all the different brands within the, the family. And he is the contributor for the merger of Starwood and Marriott. Can you guys share it? We'll talk about his, uh, what his background was, but just for me, um, you know, he's only been the third CEO of Marriott in the entire history of the company, which is amazing, right? That the family believes in this person so much that they brought him on as a leader because prior to that, it was all family that ran the, the, the hotel company. Right. And it's even more interesting considering there are other Marriott family members in the organization and they very easily could have gone that direction. So it's a real tribute to not just Mr. Sorensen, but also uh, uh, Bill Marriott as well for taking such a risk and putting the future of his family's legacy in the hands of uh, somebody that had only been with the company a relatively short time compared to how long all the Marriott's have been in the family. Absolutely. And uh, did you guys know that he was a lawyer? prior to this journey of becoming the CEO. Yes, uh, my understanding is they met um, when they did a deal and he was so impressed that he he hired him away and then he eventually became CFO. Yeah, yeah here, here you you know, you we all have this, we all hear about passions of, of hospitality and how you got into it. And it's amazing to see that someone that was a lawyer became a, uh, the CEO of a hotel brand or somebody else that had nothing to do with the industry. You hear that story all the time with your staff, your team, your connections within the industry. Um, is that something that's prevalent? Yeah. Now that uh, if you take a look at all the hotel owners and uh, you can do a um, brief survey, I guarantee you they were either started uh, or their occupation is anything other than hospitality from engineers to physicians to lawyers. So, it's uh, precedent all over the industry right now. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's awesome to see that you can come from anywhere in the world. You could start as a dishwasher, which a yeah. lot of CEOs of hotel companies were. They were the dishwasher. They were the porter. They were the bellman. They were somebody that just kept moving up. And this, I feel like, is a habit that we can all kind of follow where you, we didn't just start off as a CEO. We didn't just start off as because I mean, we're who we are today or what our goals are in the future, we had this, maybe this mindset, or maybe we had these people around us, like I talked about earlier, or maybe we just have this goal of becoming this one person, or at least achieving or striving to become this one person. And I feel like Arnie Sorensen just did that. Like he put it, maybe he might've put it out there in the, in the, in the ether saying, you know what? I would love to be the leader of this, of this company, or eventually one day I'm going to do this. Right. And do you guys believe that? Do you believe that's true? If you throw something out there and you keep it in your brain, you keep it in your heart, you keep it in your, you know, your mind, it, it eventually happens. Rupesh, you're getting all Oprah Winfrey on us. <laughs> of a thing. But yes, I think it's absolutely essential to put those things out into yeah. the universe. It sounds kind of hokey, but if you don't visualize it and contextualize it, then you're never going to achieve it. Then it's just some sort of random thought out there in the universe. You have to have a clarity of what you want. That being said, Maybe in the case of Mr. Sorensen, he recognized opportunity and was put down a path he never expected to, and then realized that that was probably his um, his destiny all along. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And so, in 1996, Mr. Bill Marriott brought him on into the company and said, "Listen, you've helped us do some of these deals together. You've helped us, you know, fight maybe through a, a lawsuit or two, or, or 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 whatever the case was." And he brought him on and said, "You know what?" This this guy know what he's talking about. He could help lead us to grow our company. Um, and I, that's exactly what he did. And so 1998, he became the CFO of Marriott, which was kind of like, are you sure we want to do this? And this is the path that brought him on to becoming the CEO, you know, just I think five or six years later, um, it was that, that drive, that commitment to keep going.
Yeah, well, Glenn, or here, and what do you guys? Uh, and here, and I would love to know since you said in 2015 you actually connected with him and you made a, a real kind of bond with him. Like, how, share what what, what were some interactions you had with him? You know, the interaction is you know we had won an award and and, and you know you shook his hand and then you meet him behind the scenes afterwards and. Uh, you know, you, you'll hear this a lot that, you know, he, he's engaged uh, when he's talking to you. He's interested in what you have to say. And and after that, you know, he, he remembered uh, who you are. And then he talked to me a little bit uh, in 2016 about the, uh, it was, uh, you know, uh, um, I sit on one of the advisory boards for Marriott. And he was then, he talked about the Starwood takeover. And in my mind at that time, it was around 2016, and I'm like, this guy's giving me 15 minutes of his time and probably talking about the biggest decision he's making in his career or Marriott's uh, uh, lifetime. And from then on, it was always, you know, he would always give you the 10, 15 minutes, the 10, 15 minutes. And he was always, that's one thing I, I, I took from him is he was engaged, he was interested, and he listened. And when he, when he asked you a question, it listened. And then, you know, uh, we, the, the, the bond grew in, in a way that uh, whenever we talked, we talked less business and more family. And that was just Arnie. You know, it's like he, he's, a, he, he's he, you know, the way I look at it, not only was he the CEO of Marriott, he was the CEO of the travel industry. Just the way how he helped, uh, uh, you know, writing a letter, open letter to President Biden for, for the travel industry, talk, you know, encouraging CEOs of big companies to, to help travel. So he was more than just CEO of uh, Marriott, in, in my opinion, I think he was CEO of the whole travel industry. When you think about it, yeah. And Glenn, you got to you got to work with him on stage at many conferences mm -hmm. um, in the past, and you just saw what kind of person he was on stage and off stage. And so far, and I personally didn't meet him. I that was my goal this year to eventually meet, talk to him and at least spend five minutes with him and understand. Like secretly, he was my mentor. Is that is that something that you know? Uh, or Glenn, what what did you uncover when you when you were at these conferences and you were connected to him as, and just talking to him? Um, just the genuineness and inquisitiveness was there, uh, regardless of how he felt inside. You always felt like he really cared about you and was really listening to what you had to say. And that made me feel very special, particularly um, you know, before going on stage with thousands of people in the audience to be able to have that personal interaction with somebody that he, he was almost doing it to make me feel more comfortable so we could both be successful together on stage, which I thought was uh, really just in, an incredible, generous thing for him to do. I've dealt with certain CEOs that are not like that, right? You know, it, and to be able to get somebody who puts such positivity out in the universe was just so genuine and so special. And I think that's why he's always going to be remembered as one of the top um, executives in our business to what you said here. And absolutely, you think about it, CEO of the entire uh, hotel business is a way to put it. There's just something about him and a couple of other of the CEOs out there that's very different than the hundreds of other CEOs that we see out of there. You can feel his energy in the room. You could feel that connectedness and you could feel like he wanted something special for everybody that was in his orbit. Yeah, absolutely. And everyone that's just joining now, guys, we're doing a tribute to the late, great Arnie Sorensen. He was the CEO of Merit Hotels International. And when I heard the news yesterday morning, um, I was devastated. I was like, man, this guy has been by the leader that I look up to when I'm thinking about hospitality, I'm thinking about making connections. And, and once I posted something about it on, on LinkedIn, man, I had so many different stories of how people were connected to him, how he walked into hotels and shook everybody's hand. And I think that's a habit that all of us could take and learn from where we're not just walking in talking to the GM, but if we're the leader of any organization, doesn't matter if you're a hotel or not, that we talk to every single person and know their, hopefully know their name or at least understand where they're coming from. And the biggest thing I learned from him was look people in the eye, which was just, and, and understand them and listen to them because I had a problem in the past where I, had, I was bad at listening. Like I would just be like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I understood and I kind of learned this, this trait where, this habit where Listening is everything. And I love that here. And you said the same thing where so many people said he's humble. Like that's like yes. the number one description as far as 
we're talking about Arnie Sorensen that everybody talked about. The one word that you would describe Arnie Sorensen is he's just humble. Doesn't matter how much money he has. Doesn't matter how many hotel uh, brands he's running or how many people work under him or how many associates are around the world that he gets to connect with. It was just him being humble and being in the moment at this time in our lives, which we can all learn from. Sometimes we're just rushed and rushed trying to do all these different things, but we're not in the moment taking everything in. And I feel like that's very important. That's one thing I learned from him as far as uh, being a humble person. Guys, comment and let us know what one thing that you learned from him. What's one word that you would describe Mr. Sorensen uh, by that kept you going. And, you know, so many people said he walked into my door and shook my hand. I'm the housekeeper. I'm the front desk person. I'm a maintenance working in engineering. He looked me in the eye and he stood there for a few minutes, or even if it was a second that he looked you in the eye, that was just, that was inspiring to me to learn that you don't just go in and, and go straight to the, your office, but you make sure that everybody's been uh, recognize, which is powerful in hospitality when we're all going through something. Yeah, I will add Rupesh, you know, one word I would say, <clears throat> as he kind of led the company, uh, you know, through the 9-11, through uh, uh, his cancer treatments, through uh, COVID, courageous. He was a courageous leader and uh, an inspiration to, I know me and a lot of the uh, people that kind of spent time with him. And uh, what, what way, Heron? What did he specifically do for you that you felt that? How did he help you? Well, you know, it's like when he came out and told uh, uh, some of us at the owners uh, conference about like how he is battling cancer, but at the same time, he still led. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you talk about uh, as, as, you know, the latest thing, COVID, where he, you know, in person, you know, talked about, uh, you know, what was going on with the company. And during all that time, he was still, you know, battling this uh, uh, cancer. And getting treatments for it and you know it's it's things like that and and, and what he would say you know uh to the owners and you know during different times how how he kind of uh you know uh, i always go and, and joked about this with him that he introduced marriott uh, homes and villas i said you know you're just playing the game with the disruptor you know it's like get some of their business back and he's like yeah kind of and hope it works but it was he was still leading he was still um uh, you know, innovative and, I, and, and, you know, to the thousands of employees, to what Rupesh is saying, shaking hands and, and to the, you know, five, six years I got to know him, he remembered, he would see you, he would make eye contact and, and say, I'll be with you in just a second. And, and, you know, for the last times I met him at conferences or whatever, I would get five, 10 minutes with him. And, and at the end, it was funny when I look back uh, and, I, and I just uh, said this, that my last conversation was more about family and he was more interested in what my kids were doing growing up you know um and, and you know he remembered that one of them went to new york and asked me the next time i saw him he goes hey how's new york treating you and wow. that's what he did that's 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 what he brought and if i was to tell anybody including myself is you know remember remember the people they, they will never forget that's incredibly impressive because i can't even remember the names of my best friend's kids <laughs> And he, uh, yeah, he, he just said, how's NYU treating you? So, you know, it was, but it was going back to our conversation we had maybe four months ago. Amazing. That's amazing. I, I love that, you know, we can all learn from his mindset, his growth. You know, he did a lot for the industry too. I, I you know, I just wrote down a bunch of things that he did that I could just remember is he empowered women, right? He had a, a leadership group just for women. He did Special Olympics. He was an avid runner. Uh, which yes. I, I always, yeah. every time we wrote an article, he's always talking about something. He loved food like I love, right? And, and um, let me see if I can pull up his uh, picture of him in Thanksgiving. Because, you know, for me, the, the, the holidays are everything for me. It just brings me back to some memory, even that maybe if I didn't have it as a, ch a, a child, I, it just brings me back to this good feeling. And, you know, he yeah. was blessed. He was grateful. And he wrote an article this past year about being grateful, just being around his family and optimistic about the future of, 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 the, of the company, of the industry. And it wasn't like, oh, we're doom and gloom, but he looked and was positive, which I love that he had this grateful, thankful mindset that just kept him going. And I feel like as leaders, no matter what position you are, you know, I, I think it's powerful that we can share that and, and, 
connect with people through like a food thing or through travel. Like here's another picture of him um, go. This is early on. This is like 2000, I think 13 when he visited India and, and um, got to connect with the people there, but his passion for travel because he traveled, I would say, I think he traveled at least three times a month, three, three weeks out of the month, right. which is a lot for, you know, for being away from your family and, you, and he's leaving behind a wife and four for kids and I understand I have three kids and you, you know, you guys understand you guys have families too. And it's, it's tough at 62 to pass away. Yeah. Well, that's why I travel so much because I have all those, I have the kids. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I, hey, well, your, your Instagram, uh, your Instagram handle is traveling Glenn. So I you know. Know it should be stay at home Glenn this last right. year, but I will say based on what you were just saying, we were talking yesterday on uh, no vacancy live with Mike Stengel, a former married executive. He just retired after being there with 40 years. He ran the Gaylord brand, for example. And he was saying, that um, Arnie's love of travel was infectious. He didn't come up in the hospitality industry like a lot of people. Because he was a lawyer, this whole lifestyle was different. It was new. It was exciting to him. So he looked at it in a lot of ways. I'm inferring here, but he looked at it a lot of ways like travelers look at it, like the average citizen looks at it. And I think that probably gave him a lot of insights that helped create such a behemoth organization. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, I, there's so many things that he did, even simple things like we're going to redo, we're going to take away all the plastic straws from our hotels and eliminate them by a certain date. And I think he announced that in like six, 17 or 18 and it happened within a couple of years. And, um, and this is like worldwide. Right. And so it's powerful when you can lead a company and you could keep going with, even through these hard times this past year, I think, consider this, like this past year, he had to battle through his treatment right, of his chemotherapy mm -hmm. and still run a company and do all these other things to keep everybody inspired. Right. During the biggest crisis ever to hit the hospitality industry. Ever, ever. And I think that's yeah. just a testament of his will is his commitment to keep going. And, uh, you know, there's so many different things that Mr. Sorensen did for the industry. Um, anything that you guys are super proud of? I mean, I, I'll say I'm super proud to be part of the Marriott family. Uh, you know, he, he had a lot to do with it in the last, you know, uh, past years and and just the way he kind of represented uh, Marriott in the travel industry during this pandemic. Just, you know, to my point earlier, I mean, that's just uh, if I was to sum it up in one word, it's just courage, courageous. Yeah. I mean, seeing him um, in the, the White House with the previous administration, yeah. sending the message that the hospitality industry needs our help, really fundamentally helping politicians grasp the fact that our industry is one of the most important industries to our uh, our economy. You know, those yeah. types of things will go for, will go forever. Not to take away from all the other people that did it, but we are recognizing him today and how hard he worked for that. And not just for Marriott, but for every company. Yeah. Out there. Yeah. yeah, and he was a people person, right? He just loved connecting with people behind the kitchen, backstage, in the rooms, in the hallways, connecting with people. And I think that's a testament just to what kind of person he was. Um, so, you know, this is a tribute to Mr. Arnie Sorensen. We're all going to miss him. We're all going to um, take his mindset, take his leadership and keep going and keep growing. And I'm going to continue saying this at the end of his last article that he posted on LinkedIn. It says, stay focused, mm -hmm. stay strong, and let's do great work together. And I think that's powerful when we're all feeling like we're alone sometimes in our in our own bubble. There's other people out there that are helping ready to connect with all of us. So that's, that's kind of where I, I want to end this conversation, but I thank all, thank both of you guys. And, and, uh, and I love this conversation guys. Thank you so much for everybody on YouTube, LinkedIn and clubhouse for sharing this conversation. Glenn, it's always a pleasure having you. Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at noon right here on uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube at noon today. We're talking to an executive from Crestline hotels that should be a lot of fun tomorrow unless it's a crazy snowstorm we're gonna be live from the pierre hotel in new york city so it's exciting check out all of our stuff including our new show friday night audit fridays at 5 p.m where we laugh and have a good time and celebrate our love for hospitality like we're hanging out at the bar after a conference sounds like <laughs> a great happy hour to me <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. this week's drink tequila sunrise uh -oh. all right we'll see you soon glenn it's always a pleasure having you on here where can people find you chattanooga tennessee <laughs> and uh, oh, yeah. right after this, uh, to, to, to what you said, what I say, stay focused. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, guys, connect with Heron on 
on um, on LinkedIn. He's an amazing leader. They're building hotels all over the place. He's connected with so many amazing people here. And it was a pleasure having you on. Hope to see you soon here in Orlando. I know you're going to be coming here in a couple a month or so. I hope yeah. you're connected and at least grab a drink. And, uh, I just say one more thing. On um, March 1st, we're doing another job fair. And we've got major, huge companies involved. So please connect with me on LinkedIn, follow our sites because this will help you. We did one last month or two months, six, six, eight weeks ago. People got jobs from watching our show and connecting with people. You'll get real emails, real help, real connections. It's all about you guys, not about us. Absolutely. And you know, for us in the hotel space, owners, operators, whatever we are, Staffing is an issue with staffing. Pe even people looking to connect with owners or managers or finding that right job is an issue right now. So Glenn, I'm so happy that you're doing this. Please send me the details so I can share it across okay. all my social media. And very generous. Thank it you. Was it was a pleasure having both of you on. I wish you the best. Thank you so much. And let's keep growing together, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Right, Talk to you guys soon. Bye. All right, guys. What did you guys think about this episode? Please hit the comments and let me know what's one thing that inspired you by uh, Mr. Arnie Sorensen, or did you ever meet, get to meet him, which would be amazing uh, to hear your story on uh, on how you connected with him and, and what he did and how he inspired you. Because here's the thing, you can connect with somebody just for that one second that inspires you and builds you up to make you go do this next thing in your life, which is amazing. I've had that happen to me several times in my life where I'm like, oh, this is amazing. I'm going to go do this because I got inspired by this one idea, this one mindset, this one little thing that kept me going. And I was like, I'm going to look at life a little bit different. I'm going to look at my job or my career or something in my life differently. And I'm sure there are stories all over the place of Mr. Sorensen connecting with you. And I would love to hear those. So continue sharing those in the comments. Guys, if you loved this episode, hit the like button. Um, after this, we are talking about uh, behind the scenes on Clubhouse. So there's a link in the in my in my profile on how to connect with me on Clubhouse. Guys, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Talk to you next Wednesday where we talk about growing ourselves, growing our mindset, growing our income. And I have so many amazing people coming on the show in the next couple of weeks. Guys, thank you so much. Talk to you next week. Take care of each other. Please stay safe. And I'll talk to you next week.